let's dive into the world of Age of Overlord rarities. Make sure you guys smash the living crap out of that subscribe button so you guys don't miss out on more Oz content. We're going to be diving into the world of everything that we know so far for this set. And they're being very shady about the reveals so far. Like, this has actually been genuinely interesting, the way that they're revealing things so far. But yes, Mseti is a secret rare. And if you expected the Horus package to be anything other than super high rarity gas gas, uh, I'm not. Especially, you know, the King Sarcophagus Searcher, the thing that makes this entire deck go round. The draw two, or excuse me, the draw one search. You remember, the thing that makes these Horus monsters insane is the fact that they're all essentially free summons as long as you have that King Sarcophagus. And you can turn the bad cards in your hand into actual fodder to make things playable. And that's why, you know, seeing Mseti be a secret, I don't know why why you'd be surprised about that. And then on the follow-up here, we do see that uh, Blessing of Horus here actually made it into the Secret of Slaughters. Well, we knew this very early on as this is the Sneak Peek promo. You know, it's the same pattern every single Sneak Peek where, you know, guess what? It's paywall behind a secret. Now, good news is you don't play in an extremely large number of these, though it is the one that does draw you cards for the engine. It, well, you know, does get a higher rarity, as of course it had to, right? Both are quarter centuries, which will look nice. And then, of course, the King's Sarcophagus coming in as an ultra rare. And I just want to point out here that if Hoppy is not a super rare, I'm going to be massively disappointed. Because honestly, Hoppy is the best one. But King's Sarcophagus makes it so that, honestly, everything in the engine kind of plays itself out. All right? This is the thing that gets the revive. Tier players are going to absolutely love playing this package. And trust me when I say this, if you are uh, looking at the sarcophagus package here and you're not expecting, you're like, ah, oh, you know, I don't need three Mseti, you know, I only need one sarcophagus. I mean, you still are going to play triple Mseti. It is the value. Like, this package is going to be the most money out of the set next to, you know, the Diabell Star stuff and the other little splashable things. And then, you know, not even mentioning here that people are going to want the blingy versions of these because they do have ye old quarter century secret rares. So that's, that's some real big things to consider. And then, of course, we know about the Odd Eyes Arc Ray Dragon. I did pull back up the picture here of the one from the poster because you do get a better chance to see this in its ultra rare showcasing. Um, I believe everything else for the Supreme King package is low rarity, which is going to be nice. I know a lot of people are going to be happy to get the chance to pick this stuff up at a severely low cost, and you also don't need multiple copies of the Arc Dragon itself, so you can save a little bit of money there. Now let's get into the bad news side of things. Uh, the Divine Temple of the Snake Eye, our field spell, this is the one that lets you, I'll be honest with you, the fact that the Snake Eye reveals didn't go the way that we thought they were going to um, leaves a lot to be desired. But the field spell getting an ultra rare, I can already tell you the people aren't going to be happy to pull this. Because I know I'm not going to be happy to pull this in a QCR. Um, they could have done way, way better for this but okay and then of course guess who is a secret rare the snake eyes flamberge dragon the big guy that uh on a level eight i'm not i'll be honest with you the fact that the big snake eye itself is a secret rare and you you can as of right now as of filming this i mean we don't have any real good like snake eye support to kind of hold this up on a pedestal and go hey you know like this is amazing in the future, that could be the case, but expected value out of the front door right now is not looking super good for the, the Snake Eyes cards themselves. Now, obviously, the Snake Eye card that does matter here is the original Sinful Spoils Snake Eye. Oh, well, it's a Sinful Spoils card. It does have Snake Eye in the name. This is the thing that lets you send one other face of card you control to the graveyard. So I'll summon a level one fire monster from your hand or deck. Yup. Yup. Trust me when I say this. This card is nuts. This is the thing that bridges the entire deck together. This is the thing that's going to send Rescue Ace off of a crazy cliff in the middle of nowhere. People are going to lose their minds about. You have all sorts of implications 
with this card being an ultra. And good news is a lot of builds will only play one of this, so if you wanted to pick up a quarter century secret rare of it, congratulations, you will get the chance to do so. It will be very, very, very available to you. Now, with all the hype and speculation here, Diabell Star is projected to be a secret rare at this point in time. Uh, a lot of people are kind of looking around going, hey, you know, like if Konami dodges tossing Diabell Star in as a secret rare, I mean, that will be a lot more affordability. Or they make the spell card that actually works with this, um, you know, the three of into a secret rare. Either way, something in the Diabell Star department is projected to be some sort of insane rarity. All right, and I know people don't want to hear that. Um, we did see the beautiful quarter century secret rare version of this via the poster, but as of right now, I, I don't foresee this being anything different. All right, it checks all of the Vices, Star, Frost, future things, other than they just didn't make this the sneak peek promo, which I still feel like was a little bit of a missed opportunity in and itself that they decided to punt Diabell Star and not have it be the sneak peek promo, but okay. Now, on the reveals video, we got some of the best news we could have. Uh, Superstar Slayer Typhoon Sty Sky Crisis. I know people are still upset about that name, but come on at this point in time, get over it. All right, Typhoon is you should be happy that it's going to be available as an ultra because that means that the price is going to be more affordable. All right. We already know what this card does. We know how insane that this card can be for these decks. All right. Like, trust me, the anti-Zeus, as we call it, because, you know, it stops Zeus effectively from getting the chance to come down. That's why we call it that. People still don't understand that. The fact that this card does all of this cool, crazy stuff, and it turns any monster on your field to it. So you can do, go through a full combo line, get interrupted, and then you can slap this guy down on something bad that you were left with at the end of a combo line. Trust me, it actually does work. All right, I've been negated four times, and then I was like, oh, cool, I'm left with a little monster. Now we can go ahead and turn it on in to something a little bit better. Now let's talk about the shady rarities here. TG Rocket Salamander. They showed the picture for the quarter century here. Now, kind of looking around here and you know the last reveals that we got, we actually got the base rarities, but we all know that the, all the ultras and whatnot are going to be in these higher rarities. Rocket Salamander being a secret rare might rub me the wrong way, but if we're going to roll out the entire archetype, as ultras, that's a lot of dead slots. But to be fair, Rocket Salamander does have Diabell Star support in its, you know, line. TG limiter removal. Yeah, this is the one that searches for the TG stuff. Yeah, I love getting ashed too. But you showed off the quarter century version of this as well, which once again, a really weird Konami. What are you doing here? What's going on with this? Did you, are you trying to mask the fact that we could be getting two TG secrets? That's all I'm throwing out here, right? It's really, really weird that you couldn't show the other base rarities. Now, the other ultras that we do know, TG over Dragnar here. This is your synchro that kind of brings back the whole squad. Yeah, I enjoy this card getting Valor. That's why I'll never play TG full combo because the amount of times that I'm just like, oh, boy, oh, boy, time to set up and do my thing. And then you get, you know, Impermed, Valor, and you're just like, yep, this is just, this is why I love this game, right? And then, of course, we have the TG Glaive Blaster down here. This is going to be your big mo boss monster. Once again, you know, shorting off uh, the fact that uh, we love these quarter centuries, man. Um, I'm not... Too excited for the fact that these could take up so many ultras. Though, don't get me wrong. I mean, it, it will be nice. As long as they're not secret, taking up the higher value slots, I think that's fine. And then, of course, the big controversial point with the SP Little Knight. Is the SP Little Knight going to be a secret rare? You have two highly sought-after cards in this set that are taking up the quote-unquote wife or waifu tax. Players know that Dia Bellstar and SP Little Knight are game-breaking cards. The fact that Doomsday Star did dodge that slot does tell me that there is potentially hope that we could see this dodge. But the problem with this is, is you have already got two cards. Actually, we're going to toss Doomsday Star in that too. You have three quarter century secrets that are about to break 
a lot of wallets and a lot of crazy things are going to happen because those cards are those higher rarities. Keep in mind, Irius was also shown off as a quarter century. And I mean, this is still the Labyrinth card that is supposed to break, you know, this deck wide open for your defensive plays, which is actually kind of nice. But if you're not expecting this to be in the secret rare slot, you're you're doing it massively wrong. And of course, we also saw Jian Long on the sneak peek video, also with the quarter century stamping on it, which I think this will probably end up in the ultra slot. It would make sense for them not to approach this and kind of maintain it uniformly across the board with the rest of the rarities that we had going on for it. We also had the full dark armored Lancer as well. I really don't want to see this in a secret rare slot, and I hope they don't dedicate a slot to this. It, it is really cool mechanic-wise what they were trying to do with this. It adds a whole extra dynamic of things to the armored archetype, which was pretty interesting. And then, of course, in your Vices lore, we do know that Samsara is going to be an ultra rare, which I think is pretty cool. Um, well, if it's not an ultra rare, they're going to break the, the canonality of what we've been seeing so far in terms of these rarities, which, Konami, I'm, I'm going to have to ask you, please don't. And then, of course, the Triskaluta, the tier elements in disguise out here for Mana Diem. Uh, this will probably be an ultra rare slot as well. If they do this anything differently, I think a lot of people are going to be surprised Pikachu faced about this. But you know what? Uh, Mana Diem eating kind of good if they do get low rarity stuff. And then, of course, the Magician of Bonds and Unity getting its second background change. You know, I'm not all that happy to see that we are getting the they're continuing on with the, the little changes in the background so subtly but okay so that's everything that we have so far for your rarities what a ride but please leave a comment down below tell me what you guys think and i'll see your beautiful faces back here in day guys peace patrons thank you Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.